The next poem I'd like to read is about a cruise I took from England to the Mediterranean last summer. And on this cruise ship were a number of Shakespeare-themed dining rooms. And I began to wonder what the bard would think about this trip and what he might have thought about another trip taken by another group of English people, but this one from Southampton in England to Massachusetts and the Cape Cod. I'm referring, of course, to the Pilgrims. Shakespeare, sailing from England to the Mediterranean with the bard on board. Cold in July, even for Britain, having left Southampton for the slow overseas trek to Gibraltar, our first destination and excursion point. The phenomenology of travel can be summed up in a phrase, never satisfied but in leaving home, but to arrive at home again. What happens in between? On board, children instructed not to run, running, being as only children can be, flip-flop flapping, never napping, ice cream dripping, heedless of anything but their secret delicious fun. As the poet somewhat says, a cruise ship is no country for old men. This repository of authentic Picassos, Gauguin's, and one Franz Mark, unnoticed by children, and if at all by their parents, only to register how as tourists they're getting their money's worth. My thoughts are suddenly with another ship, this one leaving Southampton too, but in the opposite direction, warped by time, its fate over 400 years old, its passengers a religious sect unsavory, arrogantly setting out to discover New Eden, not intending to let anything or anyone get in their way. After all, they have God's imprimatur. They are, in a word, special. Inauspicious beginnings mark every quest into the unknown. Did they know the seas would pitch, the sailors would curse, disease was destined to dog their voyage? I doubt they gave much thought to it, but like passengers on this cruise ship, simply followed orders. The odds were steeper then. They bought into an idea giving them possibilities of being accidental heroes. We bought a package guaranteeing we'd be heroes, or villains given the choice. James Bond, Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes, a tragic cast without the tragedy. Tonight we'll repair to the Shakespeare-themed King Lear dining room and our assigned seats. I wonder how many on board have savored Shakespeare beyond the appetizer section of the menu offered in high school. Traveling with the pilgrims now, we are equidistant from our destinations. Ours the hot Mediterranean, theirs the cold shores of New England. Odd, our leaving cold Britain for the warmth of the Riviera. Their leaving temperate England, Shakespeare's term, for a brutal winter on the Cape Cod. And Will, tugged between the wine-red seas and the shores of Caliban, to have lived at all times in all places was surely his desire as was his protean effort to describe the foot traffic tramping through ages, then as now, oblivious to the moods of the sea, but traversing the globe, the zodiac wheel, spinning, making heroes, villains, fools of us all, destined in the final analysis to be.